For us to the for the belly. <laughs> you didn't even get one word in. You went. Ah, blah, 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 blah. You didn't even try. Okay. What? <laughs> I want to expose Emily's seat. <laughs> oh, cat. Fuck cat. Are we recording right now? Yes. Oh, we are recording. Okay, so we'll just just do it. All right. So I remember the very first time I had a drink. I was underage. Whoa. And I was hanging out with my mom. <laughs> oh, I was with your dad. No, it was with my mom. Oh. So my mom had this like, I don't know if this is wise or bad. I think technically this is illegal, but uh, my mom always wanted to kind of uh, preempt, you know, peer pressure and drinking and all that kind of stuff. And so she actually gave me my first drink. She said, you know what, Justin, at some point in your life, you're gonna experience this. At some point in your life, you're gonna, you're gonna face this with your friends, but I want you to have your first drink right now with no peer pressure, so you can decide, you can decide today, do you like it or do you not like it? Yeah. And so I had my first beer, and I'll say that I did not like did it. Did you drink I, the whole thing, or did you have? I think I had like a then... sip or two, and I was like, screw this, this is disgusting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of bad. But uh, anyway, so today we're gonna be talking about uh, should Christians be drinking? What does the Bible say? And what is some of the best wise advice that you can get from the scriptures? Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin. And I'm Emily. And you are watching That Christian Vlogger. And on this channel, our goal is to help you understand the Bible just a little bit better, but more importantly, to make it practical and relevant so you can actually live it out for yourself and experience God's best. Today, we're gonna be talking about... Should Christians drink? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, did you ever have a drinking problem in the past? Never a drinking problem. Never a drinking problem. No. It wasn't a problem, you could drink as much as you wanted to drink. <laughs> no. No, I have tried it, um, mm -hmm. kind of like similar to your experience. Like, do I like this or not? Do I continue it or not? And I did not like the taste of it. You know, yeah. oddly enough, uh, peer pressure is a really yeah. like it real is a big thing. thing. Yeah. I remember when I was in high school, uh, the big thing, because I went to school with a lot of Asian people, shout out to all the Filipinos, woot, woot, woot. Um, <laughs> but boba was a really big thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember in high school trying my first boba, which is like a, a little drink with uh, like little balls inside it made out of tapioca. <laughs> when I first tried boba, I actually didn't like it. You didn't like which it? Which is crazy. Oh. Like I would just, I would literally like, drink the drink and anytime boba would come out i'd pull my straw out and like spit it at somebody or spit it at a car yeah. or something like that and i hated boba yeah, you like it. but uh <laughs> you know what happened was we would go week after week after week and no matter how much i didn't like boba the first time over time i actually really started to love boba wow and then i became addicted that was the same thing for me with coffee like i didn't like the taste of coffee oh yeah first. yeah but so I peer like pressure it. is real i mean and <laughs> and, and Thankfully, the things that I succumb to in peer pressure, at least in this respect, boba or coffee, they're like relatively harmless. But when it comes to alcohol, that might not always be the case. Mm -hmm. um, we know that the Bible is very clear when it comes to alcohol that Christians are forbidden to get drunk, but drinking is kind of like one of those seemingly gray areas. So what, is the Bible actually condemning being drunk? The, the answer is yes. The Bible mm -hmm. says very clearly in Ephesians 5 verse 18, and do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery but rather be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we, we agree, I think all Christians agree that the Bible is very clear. It's a sin to get drunk. Mm -hmm. But where there's kind of gray area, and what we're noticing a lot more today, is that more and more people are trying to excuse drinking without getting drunk. Mm -hmm. Just to like have wine on, glass of wine at dinner. Yeah, if I have a glass of wine yeah. at dinner, go out with the, with the, the bros and do yeah. a beer or two, but as long as we're not getting drunk, mm -hmm. Is that okay? And and I want to say, you know what? That's probably true. Uh, it's probably okay to do those things. But I want to challenge you guys to actually ask yourselves a different question. Rather than asking, is it okay or is it a sin? The question I want you to ask is, is it wise? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 23, all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. So there is a very strong difference between something being permissible and something being wise. And when it comes to the area of drinking, we have decided as our as ourselves, <laughs> your face. <low>. Sorry. <laughs> we have decided amongst the two of us to actually not drink. We choose not to drink, even though that there's a certain degree of liberty and freedom to do it, because we think it's wiser to not mm -hmm. drink. So for the rest of this video, we're going to give you five main verses on why it is not wise to drink. 
First verse is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1, which says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. The Bible makes it very, very clear that wine and alcohol, there's certain uh, challenges, there's certain risks involved mm-hmm. in drinking it. And if you underestimate the the, the power of alcohol and, and, and really the, the, the grip that it can have on your life, yeah. the Bible says straight out, you are not wise. Yeah, and I've had some um, people that I know saying, okay, maybe I'll have one glass of wine, but it really depends on your body tolerance. If you have one glass or two glasses of wine, it could get you drunk. And they're like, oh, I'm not going to get drunk, but even with one or two, it could get a certain person with the shape and size drunk. And and beyond that, like different people have different capacities or tolerances to being addicted to something. I I know for myself, I get addicted to like video games, or I get addicted to food, or I get addicted to coffee or something mm. like that. Do I want to play with fire? For me, it's not wise. It's not worth it. If, mm. if coffee is my only vice, or popcorn and french fries, those are really my three vices. Popcorn, yeah. french fries, and coffee. Give me those three things. I'm a happy guy. Um, if those are my vices, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world. Like there are worse things to be addicted to. So you need to know yourself, but you definitely need to not mm. underestimate what alcohol can do from you. Mm-hmm. Do for you. Do to you. Do not to for you. you. Do, yeah. to you. Do to you. Uh, a really great quote I heard by Max Lucado says, One thing for sure is I have never met anyone who says a beer makes me more Christ-like. Mm. And I think that's something worth considering. Yeah, mm. beer might be able to be something that you can tolerate. You might be able to drink one or two and not get drunk and not cross that line. But is it actually helping you? Does it actually help you grow your walk with God and become a better servant to others and a better Christian? Does it make you more Christ-like? And the answer is no. Why not invest that money somewhere else? So another verse we wanted to go over is 1 Peter 2.9. It says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So one of the things that we see in the Bible is that in the Old Testament, only a certain group of people were considered the priests. Only a certain people had actual access to God. But when Jesus came and died on the cross, he made it accessible. He made God accessible to everyone. And the Bible is saying now, now it's not just the pastors or the bishops or the teachers who have access to God, who are like the priests of, of the world. But all of you guys, every single one of us, when we commit our lives to God are in fact priests. And this matters because in the Bible, when the Bible is talking about the priests, The Bible says in Leviticus 10, verse 8, And the Lord said to Aaron, saying, Drink no wine or strong drink, you or your sons with you, when you go into the tent of meeting, lest you should die. In other words, there was a prohibition to the clergyman, to the the priests, saying you should not drink any strong wine or any strong alcohol. That really makes sense because they are the leaders of the clan, the group of people. They need to have the wise judgment, the Mm -hmm. um, good leadership direction directives so yeah that really makes sense yeah Mm -hmm. and and today in in, in today's age we need to have good wise spiritual spiritual discernment and Mm -hmm. that's difficult to do when you're putting uh you know things into your body that cloud your judgment Mm -hmm. verse number three is proverbs 31 verses four and five which says it is not for kings o lemuel it's not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all uh excuse me (laughs) I was trying to like hold down that burp the entire time I was reading. I'm like, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> Couldn't stop myself. <laughs> so the third reason is basically the more that you spend time drinking and committing yourself to strong drink and strong wine, the more likely you are to actually neglect God's word and neglect what God has said. Mm-hmm. And so this is something that we've seen a lot. You know, we have friends that have all tried to like do things kind of like wisely in their own minds. Like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna do this, but I won't do this. And as long as I walk that thin line, then I'm gonna be okay. Maybe you walk the line rather rather well for, for one season, but then you start to make compromises over time and pretty soon everything goes out the window. And so it really is in many situations, a slippery slope. And so if you can avoid and say at the very beginning, you know what, I'm not even gonna get started in that. I'm not even gonna play that game. I'm just gonna draw a line in the sand and say, you know what? Other people can cross, but for me, I'm gonna choose to live wisely. Mm -hmm. I think that's a better way to go. A fourth verse to consider is actually Proverbs 23, verses 29 to 35. It says, who has woe, who has sorrow, who has strife, and who has complaining, wounds without cause and redness of eyes, those who tarry long after wine, and those who try the mixed wine. 
In the end, it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart utter perverse things. You're going to be like one who lies down in the middle of the sea, like one who lies on the top of a mast. They struck me, you will say, but I was not hurt. They beat me. I did not feel it. When shall I awake? I shall have another drink. In other words, this passage is actually really describing the effects of alcohol mm -hmm. quite well. Yeah, I've known people who have gotten drunk, you know, at night and they've made very poor decisions that they wouldn't make if they weren't drunk. So I've really seen the effects of alcohol. Yeah, and usually yeah. those types of decisions, like, no one says like, man, I got drunk and then I made the best decision of my life, yeah. you know, like I, that I never would have done before. Yeah. Usually what happens is you make poor decisions and this mm -hmm. leads to woe, to strife, to mm -hmm. sorrow, to anger, to all of these different mm -hmm. kinds of things. The Bible actually is describing what it's like to be drunk to be mm -hmm. on a ship being tossed to and fro. You mm -hmm. can't walk straight. You get wounds without cause. Mm -hmm. And then the very next morning, early in the morning, you're waking up saying, I need another drink. This is a trap. This is a prison. This is not something that you want to experience for yourself. This is mm -hmm. not what God has planned for you. Mm -hmm. So again, we're asking the question, is it wise? And last but not least, we actually want to share with you guys a verse that a lot of people say on the counterpoint saying that actually the Bible says you can have drink. And at the surface, it does look like that. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 7 says, go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart for God has already approved that which you do. A lot of people look at that verse and say, there you go. The Bible says, go and drink your wine. Be happy. God already knows what you're going to be doing. But many people actually don't take into the greater context the whole point of the book of Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. The book of Ecclesiastes is saying that there are two ways of living life. There's one that's considered under the sun and there's one that's not. Mm -hmm. One that's looking only at the temporal things, only at the physical things and not with like a, a big picture in mind. And the other one's recognizing the reality of a life lived after God. It goes on to say that very passage goes on to say it says right here whatever your hands find to do do it with your might for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in sheol to which you are going what does that word sheol mean that word sheol actually is the hebrew word for the grave or hell mm -hmm. in other words if you're going to live life selfishly if you're going to live life on your own terms and not follow god's advice then god says yeah go and drink it only makes mm -hmm. sense because to that kind of person god's like literally saying like yolo you only live once you only have one life so it makes sense live it up right now party have a good time because then there's no hope for you in the future mm -hmm. but for those of us that want to have an eternal perspective in mind those of us that really do love god and want to enjoy eternity with him mm -hmm. is that really the wisest thing to do is that really what we're supposed to do and so again we want to give you guys the, the questions thrown back at, your, at you guys and really challenge you to think, you know what? Okay, the Bible makes it clear it's a sin to get drunk and being, you know, uh, the occasional drink is permissible. But what I want to challenge you is, is it wise? Is it something that you want to decide to do? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, all of us have to make our own decisions. We have shared our decision with you and a few reasons why. But we're interested in hearing from you guys. What is your decision? Let us know in the comment section below. But of course, before we go, we want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for today's episode, which is Arise Apparel. Go ahead and visit ariseapparel.com for some of the coolest Christian t-shirts. Uh, we've got some right here, not today, Satan or anything else like that. Uh, but if you want to check them out, they actually support missionaries like us with every purchase of a shirt. You can use coupon code Justin for a little discount and some goodies your way. But until next time, we're That Christian Vlogger and we encourage you to experience faith in the first person. God bless.